Super Mario Odyssey! Hey, welcome back to another review. This time around, Super Mario Odyssey, obviously. But in case you couldn't read, that's what the logo says. So, does it need an introduction? Sure, why not? That's how we do things down here. What is Super Mario Odyssey? Well, it might seem like just another Mario platformer like Sunshine or Galaxy, but there's so much more to it than that. There are so many things from past Mario games as well that are honored and referenced, but it also has a bunch of new stuff as well. It's that classic Super Mario platforming that uh, helped Nintendo make a name for itself in the console business back in the 80s after the video game crash. And suffice it to say, if it weren't for Mario, there would be no Nintendo, and Super Mario Odyssey is no exception. So let's talk about it. Well, let's start with the story. You can't have a game without a good story, right? Well, this time around, Bowser captures Peach, and then he... Wait. What's that? He captures Peach in all the other games too? Oh. So the story isn't exactly original, but it is a fresh take and pretty boss if you think about it. Instead of merely kidnapping Peach this time around, he intends to murder her. <coughs> Wait, no, that's really dark. Marry her. He intends to marry her, which is pretty intense. And it's up to Mario to chase Bowser from kingdom to kingdom to try to put an end to his evil plottings. Unlike Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2 before it, Mario Odyssey is very open world. There's tons to explore, tons to do. You can go anywhere, do anything in pretty much any order. Now the story does have a bit of linearity to it. You just go forward, but you can always go back and, and check things out again if you forgot something the first time around. For me, it took about 11 hours to complete the main story. You can check out my live stream here. But perhaps what's most impressive about Odyssey is just the, the breadth and the scope. It's just big, and there's lots to do. Even after the story is so-called complete, there's tons and tons to do post-game. And traversing across all these uh, new kingdoms and terrains is just a ton of fun. There's the Cap Kingdom with a spooky Tim Burton type of feel. The Wooded Kingdom that mixes old abandoned buildings with lush, dense forests. The Cascade Kingdom that's just super pretty and has freaking dinosaurs. The Sand Kingdom is your desert area with some really cool Dea, Dea de los Muertos vibes. The Lake Kingdom is wet. <laughs> the Metro Kingdom is awesome, specifically New Donk City. New Donk City and Metro Kingdom are one and the same. As well as the Snow Kingdom. And the Luncheon Kingdom with its bright colors and polygonal characters. And this is like not even half of the kingdoms we get to explore. And I rate the story a 5 out of 5. So let's talk about the gameplay. My favorite thing about Super Mario Odyssey and most Mario games in general is that the game teaches you how to play it by playing it. It kind of seems to not make any sense, but it does. Just, just hear me out. There's no manual, and this is a bit of a Mario staple. If you can think back to World 1-1, there's this awesome interview from Miyamoto that you should check out here, in which he explains how he designs games by when you play the game, you're taught how to play the game. <laughs> and Mario Odyssey uh, does this brilliantly. There are small elements of puzzles loaded in all of the kingdoms that actually uh, hint you as to how to defeat bosses and other enemies in that particular kingdom. Unfortunately though, there are so many ways of solving puzzles, Mario can't do it all on his own. And he actually needs uh, some enemies to help him figure it out. You can't figure out a puzzle? Well, just capture an enemy. Capturing NPCs and enemies alike is Mario Odyssey's main hook. It adds tons of abilities to explore, as well as helps you solve many puzzles and open up areas that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. Instead of having any power-ups whatsoever, all of his enemies are the power-up. And uh, that's uh, Mario Odyssey's bread and butter. Need to reach that high place? Capture an onion. Need to breathe underwater? Capture a cheap cheap. That's right, Mario can possess just about anything in this game. Perhaps the most important thing of Mario is just moving around. His locomotion is perfect with both Mario alone and all the other creatures and, and people he can possess. Moving around, jumping around, doing the whole platforming thing feels amazing. It's just so silky smooth. One minor complaint though I would have to say is the camera is a bit wonky, but other than that, everything is way fun. Bosses can be a little bit tricky the first time around, but once you discover the pattern, they're fairly straightforward to defeat. 
My favorite boss has got to be this wooden mech, and let me tell you, it's the most original and exhilarating boss battle that I've had in a really, really long time. It was super cool. There are also a lot of callbacks to past Mario games, like different ways he bumps his fist when he gets power moons, dropping a peace sign for Mario 64, an open palm for Mario Sunshine, and a fist bump for Mario Galaxy. Also, there's various pictures that are portals to other kingdoms uh, that's uh, very reminiscent of Mario 64. There's uh, different clothing options, which we'll talk about later, and there's some 2D segments, which is the sickest, most nostalgic thing Mario Odyssey has to offer its Mario fans. 2D platforming, again, is way fun. I've never been a much of a fan of platforming before, or at least this type of platforming before, but I am much more interested in these older Mario games now that I've played these awesome classic 8-bit segments. Super Mario Odyssey is not hard in the traditional sense, but gets very challenging with exploring. Oh, and by the way, that pointless 1-up system? Yeah, it's totally gone. Thank heavens. Trying to find all of the hundreds and hundreds of moons, combining your platforming skills as well as capturing enemies to help you find moons that you can't grab on your own, is where the challenge lies in this game. Thankfully, the game keeps track of which moons you already have, and if you get stuck, there are various ways to help you find new moons. For the majority of my playthrough, I played on the TV with a Pro Controller as well as the Joy-Cons, which both feel pretty natural. I think I liked the Joy-Cons a little bit more thanks to some of the motion controls. Playing this game in handheld mode is okay, except for when you need those motion controls, then you're shaking the whole system and it just kind of sucks a little bit. But overall, playing it on a TV or in tabletop mode with the Joy-Cons is my favorite way to go. And of course, the gameplay is also a 5 out of 5. So let's talk about the GUI, or the graphical user interface. Um, this is basically how you interact with the game. It's clean, it's simple. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Something that I find very helpful is that in between cutscenes and, and in between traveling to different kingdoms, Cappy will actually remind you on how to play the game. So you don't even have to access the, the basic actions menu. And I find that uh, very useful. Also, each kingdom's uh, map is designed as like a travel brochure, which is like the legitest thing. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's super cool and very whimsical how you interact with it. All this information that you have access to about each kingdom, the residents, etc. It's unique and great. What more can I say? Five out of five. So the graphics and the music are, uh, well, they're about what you'd expect from a Mario game. This time, though, they're in HD and, man, <laughs> it looks so good. There are so many different kingdoms to explore that really show off the graphical prowess of the Switch. There's just so many bright colors and so many different environments and landscapes to look at. There's just so many different shapes in each kingdom. It's it's really a treat. There's also a ton of different costumes that you can play. It doesn't change the gameplay, but the costumes, all of them you buy in shops. Some of them uh, specifically with that kingdom's purple coin and the rest of them just with coins in general. Uh, but yeah, there's tons of different ways to play, which is a lot of fun. You can mix and match the hats and the clothes. This is very similar to what Nintendo did with Breath of the Wild and what Game Freak has done with the past few Pokemon games. And so now it made the jump to Mario, and it's a really good idea. There's also a really cool photo mode that you can pause at any time and just move the camera around wherever you want to. Zoom in, zoom out, tilt it, add different photo filters, and then hide the information on screen to save a snapshot with the capture ability on the Switch. So you can effectively capture a capture, which is crazy. Now let's take a moment to relish in the glory of my favorite music in this game.
So yeah, it's all pretty mind-blowing. Pretty dang good. Uh, but then again, that's what you'd expect from a Super Mario game. I suppose my only disappointments is that we have no way of purchasing these soundtracks legitimately in the United States, which is such a bummer. I still have all the soundtracks, but, uh, you know. <clears throat> my other disappointment is uh, that there's not much voice acting. In fact, basically no voice acting at all. And this is something that we had in Mario Sunshine 16 years ago. But for some reason, I guess that was just like a one and done feature for Mario Sunshine. I don't know. And lack of voice acting makes me sad. So graphics and music, 4.9 out of five. So to wrap it up, uh, you know, my favorite Mario game for the longest time has been Super Mario Sunshine. And that's probably because that's the first Mario game I actually played all the way through. Uh, and it was really the first video game I was allowed to own as a kid way back in the day. Man, 2002 was a really long time ago. <laughs> so I'm not super sure if Odyssey tops that game, especially in terms of nostalgia factored in, but it is technically the best and most fun Mario game out there. And in my opinion, it's just really gosh dang good. What more do you need to know? So there's a lot of good stuff about Super Mario Odyssey. The controls are tight, cappy, and the capture mechanic is fantastic. And there's just so many places to explore. It's really great. A ton of post-game content, there's no one-up system, and it just makes me really happy. There are a few negatives, uh, not too many like we mentioned. Uh, there's a wonky camera, sort of, not a big deal, and no voice acting and no way to buy the soundtrack. Actually, there is a sound selection on iTunes, which is pretty cool. Eight bucks, 12 awesome songs, Jump Up Superstar. So yeah, it's a start. Um, it's not like the whole soundtrack or anything, but hey, Nintendo delivered, and I appreciate that very much. But, uh, Overall, ha, yeah. This is a must-own game for all Switch owners. Overall, I rate Super Mario Odyssey a 4.9 out of 5. So thanks for watching. Appreciate the view.